All right, folks, welcome to Ask Evelyn. Let me grab our lovely co-host here. I love that Instagram is telling me that I just started a live video. I think that's awesome. Hey, we're good. All yeah. right. It's funny, Pat, you, the folks who have already joined us, as soon as I started the live video, the computer decided to tell me that I started a live video, which was fantastic. I was right. like, I think I know what's going on. Right. So awesome. Well, good to see you. Thank you everybody for joining us. This is the 14th episode of Ask Evelyn, where we answer your questions about garbage, recycling, compost, and all nice. other trashy topics. I'm Becca Fong. I'm the Residential Solid Waste Outreach Program Manager for Seattle Public Utilities. And my lovely co-host is? Hi, I'm Pat Kaufman, also Pat Recycles. Um, I do the Commercial Recycling and Composting Program for Seattle Public Utilities, helping businesses recycle and compost all their wasted items. So yeah, happy to be here. It's pretty exciting. I can't believe we're on episode 14. It's pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> Um, thank you guys all for joining us. It's totally a highlight of our week, definitely, to see you guys and to come to you guys with some interesting questions and discussions. So we've got a really good show for you guys today. We've got two great questions that came to us from, hopefully, one of you on social media. Um, and then, of course, we also get questions from those of you who send them to askevelyn at seattle.gov, which is fantastic. Yeah, so keep coming. We've been getting lots of questions. It's been great. It's it's awesome. It's really good to know kind of what you guys are thinking about and what you have questions about. And it's really fun to just, you know, take a different take on it. So um, you can also, one quick reminder is you can also put questions in the comments and we will try to get to them if we can during the conversation. So definitely, like Pat said, keep them coming. So um, should we kick us off? Pat always starts yeah. us off with our first question here. All right. So question number one uh, it says, Dear Evelyn, what do I do with non-stick pans? I've got some where the coating is peeling on the non-stick pan. These are frying pans. Uh, so I don't want to use them anymore because the non-stick stuff is peeling. Can I recycle them? Or has, has the plastic handle? Um, and and does, that, does that make it non-recyclable and having the plastic handle? And that's from Sean. So Sean, good question. I get this question like, you know, it kind of comes up on Ask Evelyn every, every now and then. Uh, and it's a, it's a, you know, it's not... People think of like recyclable metal and they think it has to be a cast iron skillet, like right. just iron, just metal. But that's not really the case for, for metal recycling. Um, luckily, here in Seattle, we have a great recycler of metal, right, in our, in our community. It's new core steel. It's, it used to be called Bethlehem Steel years ago. Yep. But, but uh, it's a big steel mill, right, in Seattle, right off the... the right in my of, neighborhood. That's right, right in your hood. It's right over there. Right under the West Seattle um, Bridge. Yeah. yeah, right off to the north, uh, south of the West Seattle Bridge, you're, you're headed towards into West Seattle. And uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's an awesome facility. I mean, I know you've been there, Becca, so have I on different recycling group tours and things. And it's, it's just like the movies. I mean, there's the sparks flying and stuff. <laughs> so, you know, they're cranking out molten metal coming out of these chutes and things. And it's, it's awesome. But so what goes into it are these huge magnets that just pick up all the scrap metal out of these rail cars and semi trucks and all this, pretty much a lot of the scrap metal in Seattle, certainly all the tin cans yeah. that come through a tin, of course, is a coating that goes on a steel can, but all the metal cans in Seattle that are ferrous metal, steel, they go to Nucor. So it's kind of cool. All of, our, all of our scrap metal that's ferrous metal in Seattle pretty much stays here locally because it's the cheapest and most direct option for a recycling market is to go to the closest steel mill and um, all that material is melted down. And it's such a violent, crazy melting <laughs> process. And um, it, anyway, it's, it's cool. It's really cool. And I think uh, our social media wizard, uh, Katie Dillon, she's going to post on our Pinterest page some links to the new core steel, uh, some of their promotional videos that show the in, internal workings of the plant, which would be pretty cool. So that coating, on, back, back to the question, uh, that coating on the pan is totally not a problem. I mean, they totally. Just, how do you say, Becca, you say? I was like, so what, I, what I'm always saying is like, they just melt all that business down anyway. Right. So, and you'll see that in the video. Um, I did dig one up from the depths. Oh, nice. So this was kind of a perfect example that I imagine Sean was asking us about. So it's mainly metal, 
right? It does have a plastic handle mm -hmm. and it's got this Teflon coating is really not of consequence, right? Okay. Like you, you don't want to use it anymore, which is why I found this in the depths of the garage, right? So it's been scratched, so you don't want to use it anymore. And even if you wanted to put it in like this, Pat, it's cool to put it in it's just fine. like this into your cart. Um, what's kind of neat about this one is that it actually has a screw. Uh, so like what I would probably do is I'll probably unscrew it and yeah. then throw the handle away in the garbage because we don't know what kind of plastic this metal is. Right. Um, but you could, you could, one could throw this whole thing into the cart. But if you feel like you want to go that extra like 10 seconds and can actually locate a screwdriver, yeah. which is sometimes really hard in my garage, right. um, <laughs> you can take that off and then throw the plastic away. I'm, so, it's like peeling labels and strapping and taping off your cardboard. We love it. We love recyclers that prepare the recycling material to the, to the highest degree, yes. that commodity, that little sliver of material that goes into that commodity, whether it's the cardboard or the scrap metal, is as clean as possible. That, in that respect, you know, the material is gonna be much easier to process at the mill, regardless of what kind of mill it goes to. And it's also gonna bring the highest dollar as a commodity when it's brokered. And, and that's good for our rates. It stabilizes our rates when we're not sending dirty material down every direction like that. So if you can, you know, take the handle off like your, your pan can. Sometimes they're infused in there and you can't really get the handle yeah, off. Yeah, totally. That's we say handles are not a problem. Um, but do, do what you can to clean up your recyclables so it's just the commodity we're after. That's great. Totally. And I think, you know, we've talked about this before is that through the recycling process, which is different for every material, for the metal recycling process like this will likely go get sorted and go to new core steel you know there's a lot of metal even though this is a pretty small pan there's still this piece there's this piece and when metal is recycled it's almost 100 percent reclaimed there's very little that is lost in the process so you right. would much rather put this into the recycling than putting it in the trash right. so that's and definitely sometimes the metal, i'm not really sure on new core's part but sometimes the metal all the metal material goes through an, an industrial shredder and where they do try and you know break up the non-metallic materials a little bit. So it's, it's, there's a possibility that, that handle won't go into the, to the melting pot or whatever it's called. It might, or they put it in the crucible. And if it does, this, it, they melt all that business down. So yeah. it's gonna be okay. So and they yeah. have rubbers and, and air, <laughs> you know, like purify, you know, the, the uh, discharge and whatnot is all, you know, managed appropriately. Totally. Or, federal regulatory, you know. So anyway. So, so definitely go and check out our Pinterest page because we're going to have a link to yeah. that core steel video, which is really cool. It's something that you don't get to see very often. Right. Um, even when Pat and I have been able to go and a couple of our coworkers, they're very regularly because it's just, you know, it's an industrial facility. So, mm -hmm. but check it out. It's really super cool. One um, more thing about scrap metal. I mean, so, that, so we've just been talking about pots and pans that could go into your, your cart or your recycle cart for curbside collection. But if you have like a barbecue or larger scrap metal item like that, or, or some sort of like bicycle or something, not bicycle, because we actually reuse bicycles. But the point is that larger things, same thing applies. If there's right. a rubber between here and there, maybe a plastic handle or a little plastic wheel on some metal cart or something, you can take that. But larger items like that are not accepted curbside. Through bulky item pickup, they could be. Yep, or you can take them to the transfer station. <laughs> Yeah, you can take it to the station and there's a scrap metal pile over on the side and you just take your scrap metal over there and toss it on and, you know, that's, that's, that's the, uh, it's okay again. They melt all that business down, apply to bigger items too. Okay, awesome. All right, so definitely, thanks for the question, Sean, a really good one. Definitely yeah. one that we get a lot, so it's good to cover it. All right, so our next question is, again, another really common question that we get. So here we go. Dear Evelyn, is it true that two personal care containers like soft tubes for facial cleansers similar to toothpaste tubes are not recyclable and thus go in the garbage that comes to us from margie so margie that's a really good question we get that a lot right because plastics can be really really tricky and you know when we're talking about so like facial cleansers so i've got a tube right here right so it's kind of a soft flexible tube it's got a plastic rigid cap to it this is not recyclable, nor is your toothpaste tubes, right? No. And one, yeah. you've got all kinds of different plastics that are involved here. And so it's really hard to determine what those plastics would be to be able to sort them. Mm -hmm. And then also another thing to think about is that it would be impossible 
to follow one of our top rules for recycling is empty, clean, and dry. There would be no way you could get all of the toothpaste out of here and get it clean and all of the facial cleanser out of here. I mean, that is a tiny opening. Like, that's never going to get clean, right? So that's definitely something to think about. Um, there's, I think that with a lot of these kind of, you know, different healthcare products, they yeah. come kinds of packaging and there are lots of different kinds of plastic. And it really is remembering to get it clean, empty and dry and then separating it into, you know, the one pla recyclable plastic commodity possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we, we only want the, you know, tubs, bottles, jugs. That's the kind of category we're after. Of course, we accept in Seattle, you know, the clamshells and containers and the strawberry containers and stuff like that. And we talked about on previous shows that flimsy, you know, cookie tray is not what we want. Right. That's too, too flimsy. But so kind of pivoting back to the tubes, tube is also like a pouch, you know, right. a lot of pouch product now and food, food grade stuff. Um, there's a lot of like baby food now is like a lot of pouch product, I guess. And my time. There are a lot. There are yeah. a lot. So, I mean, there's <laughs> there's a lot that. out there. But so uh, one thing I want to touch on all this is, is with the two product you show and tell there is that, you know, one can just take a pair of scissors and cut right through the body of it, right through it. And you end up with two pieces and you can get days worth of uh, toothpaste. <laughs> Those tubes. I'm, t I'm not kidding you. I mean, you oh, I know you're not kidding hard. me, Ben. I mean, they sell those products, those little like wind up toothpaste, you know, squeezer things like, you know, the little stick. And I mean, or you put it on a surface and you're pushing the tooth, you know, <laughs> use your thumb and it like, hurts. You know, you're trying to squeeze that toothpaste out. <laughs> well, just cut it in half and, you know, say, look to your, to your housemates, this one's mine now. I'm going in with my, I know, right? my toothbrush. I'm gonna scrape it out and I've got, geez, that's even more than I normally squeeze out of the tip of the tube, but I'm, I'm going after it, you know? So I'm just like, use all the product you buy, you know? Right. And, don't, and, don't sweat it. And you don't have to worry about destroying the tube because it's going in the trash yeah, anyway. Exactly. So, right. it's a really really good... like, I would never recommend cutting a ketchup bottle in half <laughs> that last bit because, you know, you want to send it through the recycle program as a ketchup right. plastic ones. Those and ones big as big of a piece of plastic as possible. Yeah. So one that we do get a lot too is like hand pump right. soap. Mm -hmm. And so this plastic rigid container kind of fits into the bottle tubs and jugs. I would call this like a bottle. Right. The thing is though, this plastic pump part, right. it's made out of, you know, you've got the straw, you've got the pump and you've got kind of the metal spring. So this yeah. whole piece has to go into the garbage, but this is easy to recycle. You just rinse that out and you can put that in the tub. So it was, you know, I was just kind of going through, uh, you know, um, yeah. going through my, my bathroom and looking at all the right. different things that we have. So, and I, so, I reuse these. I mean, that's what I do. So yeah. I just buy like a refill and reuse these. And I know we've talked to a lot of different, different folks and they say, you know, there's ways to buy, always buy the biggest amount of something that you can buy. Right. And right. like that soap container, I'll refill it. You know, so I can buy like one small hand pump container, we use it over and over again and buy a big bottle of refill. Um, and that's usually a really good way to go. One of our coworkers was talking about how she buys the biggest toothpaste she can buy at Costco. And that's fantastic. So I think that is true because, you know, the overall package is going to have certain elements. The pump is gonna, not going to be different from size, you know, so getting the biggest one you can, the family size, as they call it often. Um, but refillables or concentrates, anything like that, you can have yeah. the different product options on the shelf. You're like, okay, if I get this, if I get this consumer packaged item, it, it comes as a, as a line of product with the refillable option. So that's a good choice. The other choice on soap is bar soap. You know, yeah. can, I mean, there's very little waste in bar soap. Like you buy a boxed bar soap and it's a recyclable. If it's one of those wrap bar soaps, that paper is not like the kind you want to recycle. Right. You can also buy, I mean, soap without any packaging, too. There are several you know, yeah. grocery stores where you can do that as well. Absolutely. You can buy that at farmer's markets. So it's, it's pretty yeah. widely available. But paper wrappers, absolutely. Right. Local, in that's, local ingredients, you know, yes. that's like local. You go to the, the real local, the farmer's market, you know, track. Or you can just go like, you know, less weight, less packaging, which would like be the bar soap. And then there's the pump option, too, which, you know, we do it all. We you know different, different I things. Know. 
different soaps, you know? Kat, I think we need to follow up, like, show and tell, like, different <laughs> kinds of soap in your house. I think that, you know, we're going to have to put that together. Okay. Maybe we can put some of those ideas on Pinterest. I think too. you're joking with me now. I think you're messing with no, me. No, <laughs> I'm totally serious because I use all those different methods, too, which is awesome, you know, uh, and you use them for different applications. So I use yep. the foam soap, but we won't get into that. Um, slippery territory. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. So yeah, absolutely. Quick recap. So plastic tubes, all of these things, like Pat said, they go in your garbage. Right. Get all the business out of them. Cut them open. Get to it. Because yeah. you don't have to worry about preserving the shape of this because it's right. going to the trash anyway. One so. more point, uh, as, as the frugal recycler, I will say, is, uh, you know, some of those creams and lotions that you get from like the cosmetics department, I mean, you're paying top dollar for that stuff. So you want, you're, I think people need to be cutting the bottom of those tubes off and getting those extra days of use out of that. Oh, tube. You speak the truth, Pat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you speak the truth. I'm getting every penny out. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Now it's the portion of the show where we check in on our weekly waste challenge. And this month, or so we pick a different tip or trick to try every week because it always, you know, changing habits is hard and we want to try new things and report back to you guys, even though we're dyed in the wool waste nerds, we, you know, try new stuff every week. So this is plastic free July. And so we've got kind of a, a, ta a weekly waste challenge that takes on that theme. And so for last week's weekly waste challenge, what we were trying to do was swap out a plastic item for a reusable item. Pat, you and I were talking about thinking about 4th of July and picnics even though we're not getting together in kind of the traditional sense of the term and hosting a whole bunch of people, it was really thinking about like, how do you still have that kind of picnic feel and yeah. not use new plastic items? So Pat, you had a really good I, thing you tried, which I thought was awesome. Well, yeah, I think it just, it's just making the right choices when you go to buy your product. You know, we, we, we purchase paper plates for convenience and sometimes we use them. I mean, we're, we're recyclers, right? But we still yeah. go convenience options sometimes. And it is 4th of July holiday. I mean, we barbecued. We were outside. You know, I think your similar story is. Yeah. So we use the paper plates, not a plastic coated paper plate or a plastic plate. We use their durable utensils and, uh, you know, just drink our, our beverages out of the containers that we purchased them in, you know, so or water, whatever. But the point is that that we really didn't use any plastic for our Fourth of July meals, which is nice. Which is fun. I mean, we tried really hard too. I think now more than ever trying to make things feel festive when every day can kind of blend into yeah. the next. Yeah. Um, for us, it was really important to do something that just kind of felt celebratory, right? And it was actually sunny on the 4th of July because it was raining on the 3rd of July, which was a bummer, but pretty par for the course. So right. we did, we totally, we barbecued at home. We ate outside. So we set up the picnic table and normally, you know, we would have paper plates and, we would have, you know, maybe some disposable cups or something like that. And what we did was we just grabbed a whole bunch of stuff from, from the kitchen and brought it outside. Yeah. And I think that, you know, getting into that practice of like literally just grabbing the utensils out of the drawer and using the plates for, for us, because I have small kids, I definitely don't want to use like ceramic plates outside because that's a bit of a recipe for disaster. Yeah. So trying to find some durable kind of camp plates, you know, that we have that are plastic or we have plastic ones, we have metal ones that we reuse and we've had for years. So that's a really good way to kind of dig those out and use those in kind of an everyday way, which is really super helpful. So, and as we're going to, you know, do summer picnics and things like that with friends and we're taking stuff with us, which is definitely a good safety precaution for COVID times. Um, just kind of thinking about what you have on hand and grabbing that instead of grabbing a single use plastic stuff. I'll make a plug for cloth napkins as well. I <laughs> I love I love the cloth napkins. I got I keep them with me all the time. It's just my favorite way of it just feels better. Absolutely. I mean, I think that that's a really easy swap that you can use over and over again, which is really pretty great. So, okay. Um, so for next week's weekly yep. weight challenge, we're definitely going to be keeping on this theme for a plastic free July. And we are going to be looking at a reuse or a best option for non plastic food storage. So you can oh, yeah. Using a really good container, or what kind? What kind of non-plastic items using for food storage? That could be kind of anything in your refrigerator, in your pantry, when you're taking snacks to go outside. So we'll report back on that. Um, and yeah, I hopefully you guys will give it give it a try too, and let us know. Right, folks want to send in their comments on that. I'm happy to you know we extend the challenge to everyone, and if they have their input on that, because that's a good one. There's a lot of good 
subject matter in that, uh, in that challenge. Absolutely. And as always, I mean, for any other weekly waste challenges or for any questions, please send them to us. You can put them in the comments through Instagram or any of our other social feeds. We're on Facebook and Twitter too. Um, so that is a wrap for our show today. Thank you so much. That was another great episode of Ask Evelyn. And thank you so much for tuning in. And like we said, please, we love getting your questions. It's what powers the show. We love hearing from you and hearing what you're interested in. It just, it keeps us going. That's why we do what we do. So if you guys can remember, tell one person about us. Um, so we can kind of grow our audience, share through your networks. We just want to, we want to spread the word. So, great. um, so we'll see you next Wednesday at 1130 for more Trash Talk. And we hope that you find this as useful advice from your utility. And with that, I'm Becca Fong. And remember, life's simpler with less stuff. And I'm Pat Kaufman. Remember to recycle right. All right. Take care, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. See you, Becca. Bye.